Hey folks, don't mind me, just getting ready for my brand new television show. This is so exciting. All my life I've always wanted to have my own show where I talk about... Oh yeah, I almost forgot. So I had a mental breakdown the other day over the fact that Wee Chess never came to the US, and during my breakdown I thought that becoming the host of a talk show about localization would be a good way to take the edge off, so here I am. Is it so much to ask to pretend that I'm smart while holding a Wii remote? Hi. Welcome to the Localization Appreciation Station, your one-stop shop for shit nobody cares about. Tonight's story, video games, and as if that wasn't worth not caring about on its own, tonight we're accepting calls from you lovely viewers out there. It's lonely around here. So fellas, specifically those who are baffled by the fact that Bread Rebirth is exclusive to the States, let me lay out a relatable situation for you. You just got back home after a long, hard day of work, and all you want to do is sit back, relax, and play your Wii. And you're lonely because your opinion doesn't matter and you own Chibi Robo. You walk over to your nearest local game collection with a hankering to play Wii Chess, but then you realize... The game didn't release in your region. FUCK THAT STINGS! Now that we've set the scene... That's all I've got, so I'd like to invite one of our... Seven active viewers to offer their takes. You fuckers better come through. Oh, we have a live one! I eat virginity for breakfast! Please hear me out! British. Have you ever tried communicating with someone outside of your home country? Of course you haven't, it's impossible. There are a lot of languages out there. For example, there's American English and the stupid ones. And all of them have a lot of differences between them, which can make communicating messages and ideas across them pretty difficult. For example, if you're ever in France and you hear someone say, Oh la vache, well, first of all, get out of there because you're in France. And second of all, they're basically saying the equivalent of someone in English saying wow or damn or oh my god. But literally, they're saying oh the cow. It just goes to show how knowing words and grammar in another language just isn't enough to accurately translate video games or media in general. You need to have a good amount of knowledge of expressions, idioms, slang, and general cultural aspects of how people communicate in that language in order to do the translation justice. So what exactly is up with that cow? God damn it, go away, I don't want you as a guest speaker. So I dusted off Wii Chess for nothing? You mean the game I specifically said I couldn't play, which was the catalyst for the mental breakdown that led to me hosting the show? I'm sorry, I just can't imagine a life without this thing. What's that like? It's a living hell, it's like drinking lemonade and realizing it's infused with rat poison. Is there rat poison free lemonade? In America there is. God, that must be hell. Is there a cure? I don't know. But talking about stuff no one cares about helps sometimes. Well then, let's talk about some region exclusive games! Welcome to the show. <sighs> well, that was interesting, but I still can't help but be pissed about Wii Chess. I, I need stronger stuff. Well then, why stop there? Let's keep this hype train rolling by talking about translation errors in games! That's genius! It's the stupidest shit I've ever heard! Translation in the early days of gaming was particularly rough. And it makes sense, gaming was in its infancy, developers and publishers were still figuring out the exact scale and manner of attention that this form of media needed. I mean, look at actual infants, they can't even speak one language, fucking losers. There wasn't a lot of time or resources devoted to proper translation, it was crude and messy and just made to get the job done of putting the game in other languages. As such, there are a lot of relatively older games that are infamous for having absolutely ridiculous translation errors. For example, the notorious end screen of Ghostbusters NES, which reads, Congratulation, you have completed a great game, period, and proved the justice of our culture. Now go and rest our heroes. Like, what is there even to say about this? Yeah, this is rough, but fun fact, it's actually even worse in the Japanese version. For one... Well, it doesn't even work. Yeah, there's a glitch in the Japanese version which causes the credits to not load, but you can make them show up through the use of cheat codes, and as it turns out, it includes the same fucked up English text from the North American release, the only difference being that great is spelled wrong. So you're telling me they fixed that error, but not the rest of them? A similar incident occurs at the end of Ghosts and Goblins on the NES, where it says, Congratulations, the story is happy end. Thank you. For those listening at home, the score is Ghost-themed NES Games 2, spell check zero. The game Zero Wing is renowned for its poor English translation, the most widely known example of which is the now meme-worthy quote, All your base are belong to us. But it's also home to such wonders as, Somebody set up us the bomb, You know what you're doing, and You have no chance to survive, make your time. 
Apparently, the guy they put in charge of the English translation actually had rather poor English, and yeah, that'll do it. To be fair, it's better than what I can do. You give me a Japanese word and tell me to translate it? It doesn't end well. Unfortunately for Zero Wing, this bad translation is the main thing it's remembered for nowadays. Although the game seems to have been fairly well received back in the day, it's been largely forgotten about beyond the all your base are belong to us meme. Another game that this happened to was something called Breath of Fire 2. This game is absolutely littered with weird quotes, some of the best being the line got got away and if you don't hurry, I'm going to begin the salad toss show. Yeah, that'll inspire an eyebrow raiser too. Much like Zero Wing, this game isn't really super relevant beyond the shitty localization. It's generally evaluated as a pretty average, unremarkable game overall, so when it's home to... well, that... then it's not really too surprising that people are gonna know it for being a thing with weird translation rather than for actually being a game. I guess on one hand, that might be a positive thing for these titles. They had a unique quirk that allowed them to maintain relevance beyond what their shelf lives might otherwise have been. But on the other hand, the only reason they're relevant is because of what they fucked up. Like, imagine being dead and the only thing people remember you for is that time that you stumbled over your words during a class presentation. I'd be the pissiest ass ghost anyone's ever been haunted by. I can so relate to that. One time I said I was about to begin the salad toss show during a class presentation, and everybody fucking shot me! What were you trying to say? Well, I was trying to say I'd begin the salad toss show. Well, that's not accidentally, then. I thought it meant something else! Point is, those poor games are just misunderstood. People are just too negative. They don't understand what it's like to fuck up your words. Hell, so many of these supposed translation errors aren't errors at all. People just don't understand their genius. Right, you are. There are some notable quotes from games that definitely seem like the result of shitty localization, but actually were fully intentional and just came out a little weird. Are you... gonna say what they are? I don't know, I was hoping you knew. Not to worry, I was born to talk about bullshit! Zelda 2 on the NES has a pretty well-known NPC who says the line, I am error. At first glance, this seems like an obvious translation mistake because, well, have you heard anyone say that recently? But looking at the original Japanese version of this game, the dialogue remains the same. This is because in the original Japanese version, there was also a character named Bug. Hence, the two together were meant to be Bug and Error, a simple light-hearted computer joke. But the character named Bug was mistranslated into English as Bagu. So really, there was a translation error related to this character. But you know what? He's perfect the way he is, damn it! The quote, you spoony bard from Final Fantasy II on the SNES has become a notorious running joke among fans and has been referenced numerous times in the series itself. But it isn't really a translation error in the same realm as congratulation. In the original Japanese version, the conversation that takes place in this scene goes quite a bit differently compared to the English one. And spoony, believe it or not, is actually a word that exists in the English language. What does spoony even mean anyway? I think it's pretty obvious. Huh. Looks like it means silly, foolish, or unduly sentimental. Stop making me look dumb on my own show. Hey, that's not my fault. You should have known it was an insult. Yeah, well, I think you're spoony. Nope, you're spoony! You're spoony. That being said, the quote is still definitely a bit on the weird side and is likely the result of the game having a localization team with less than stellar English. But really, it isn't so much a translation error as it is a bit of a weird choice made during localization. Final Fantasy 2 is actually home to another translation oddity, that being this karate man who says, Achoo! Bless you? So apparently, in Japanese, the sound acho is basically a typical martial arts yell. The equivalent of something like haya in English. So clearly, the translation team just directly copied this sound into the English release of the game and added a bunch of O's, not realizing what it actually sounds like to a native English speaker. But there's one problem with that. The karate man doesn't actually say acho in the Japanese version. He says ha, just another generic fighting noise. And evidently, the translation team thought that that would just sound too strange to English ears. So they opted to give the karate man allergies instead. That's right, they had to put in effort to fuck this one up. 
Another pretty famous quote comes from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Right before the final battle with Dracula, he says, What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. It's a bit of a strange sentence, and at first glance, it might appear to be the result of a rough translation process. But as a matter of fact, it's just the result of plagiarizing a random French guy. In the original Japanese version of this scene, Richter and Dracula have a fairly standard confrontation, where Dracula says might makes right, and Richter says that respect and love and cooperation are what's most important. Something like this might come off as a bit corny if translated directly into English. So naturally, the translation team took some creative liberties and changed the dialogue to be... Still a bit corny. I thought that was just how Europeans talked. We don't talk like that! We're people, not Renaissance stage performers! The British man doth protest too much, methinks. Oh, like American English makes so much sense. More than yours! Why do you spell colour, flavour, and humour so weird? Because we left you behind in 1776. Fair point. Why do you spell grey with an E? It's pronounced grey, not re. Obey, convey, survey... Why do you call fries chips? That's just... That's just not right. Why do you call football soccer? It's literally a foot-based sport. You use your feet way more than in what you call football. Moving on. Some translation errors in games have been the source of major questions and mysteries. For example, in Street Fighter 2, the character Ryu has a victory quote which reads, You must defeat Sheng Long to stand a chance. In the original Japanese version, he actually says, If you cannot overcome the Shoryuken, you cannot win. But somehow, Shoryuken got mistranslated as Sheng Long, and combining that with the general phrasing of the quote in the English version, makes it sound like Sheng Long was a person that you could battle in the game. This inspired rumors and urban legends as Street Fighter fans tried to figure out how the hell to find this mysterious character. The magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly added fuel to the fire with its 1992 April Fool's edition which included fake screenshots of a fight with Shang Long along with detailed instructions on how to unlock the fight, which only added to the mystery. Guys, it was an April Fool's edition. It literally says April Fool's at the bottom of the page. Were gamers just more gullible back then? Not really. They just believe in different things now. Like thinking that America is superior to Europe when they don't even have Wii Chess. Sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of my freedom! In Sonic CD, you're able to access a secret sound test from the title screen by pressing down, 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 left, right, A. From there, if you input FM number 46, PCM number 12, and DA number 25, you get... A fever dream. As if that wasn't strange enough, there's a bunch of Japanese text on the screen that translates to Infinite Fun, Sega Enterprises, Image by Margin. The term Margin in Japanese basically refers to some sort of supernatural entity with magical powers. So it can be translated as anything from genie to warlock to devil. And evidently, a lot of people chose to translate it as devil, which adds to the overall creep factor of this secret screen. But in reality, Margin is just the child childhood nickname of Sega designer Masato Nishimura, who was responsible for the creation of this nightmare fuel. Interestingly though, that nickname came to be partially because it was an alternative way to read his actual name. Apparently, the closest equivalent in English is if you have a friend named Sean, whose name is spelled like this, and you feel like being a dick to him. Combine that with the fact that this works as a pun on the word margin, and the name stuck. So technically speaking, the translation of margin as devil isn't completely wrong. But its intended use in Sonic CD was meant to refer to the person who actually made the screen, not to make it satanic. So this time, the translation error wasn't made by a localization team with bad English. The translation error was made by us? Maybe the real translation error was the friends we made along the way. We're not friends, this is a business relationship only. Why can't we just get along? If I got caught being friends with a British person, I'd be exiled from all my social circles for betraying the cause. Do you really take it that seriously? Patriotism is not a laughing matter. Overall, translation errors and mishaps aren't typically a very impactful part of gaming in the grand scheme of things, but there's some fun little oddities that can provide a good amount of entertainment. And they can be a fun way to observe the evolution of gaming as a whole. I think the fact that translation errors are way more common in older games just showcases how video games have gone from a somewhat niche, underserved medium to the massive industry that it is today. I also think that it can be interesting to see why and how certain translation screw-ups happen. It really goes to show the true depth and diversity of languages and how hefty a chore localization can be. 
It can give you a better appreciation for how hard it is to learn a language and be able to read, write, or speak it fluently. While a lot of translation errors are funny, anyone who tries to learn a language deserves a lot of credit for the effort that they put into it. So go out and learn a language, it'll improve your life. As long as you're not learning French. Well folks, that's all the time we have left for this episode of the Localization Appreciation Station. Make sure to tune in next time when we talk about chairs that never made it outside of Italy. It'll be riveting. I can't wait! When does it air? Well, you swore so much that you've made broadcasting in the UK a massive liability for this show, so the producers are probably gonna have to figure out how we want to keep this thing running without losing all of our funding. Also, you're definitely not going to be allowed back on this show again, so I hope you cherished your television debut. I couldn't help it! I just get so passionate about localization! Fun excuse. Still bannable. But the next episode is supposed to air in a couple of weeks, so I'll keep you updated. Thanks! It's been an absolute honor to be a part of the first and only TV show I've ever watched! The honor was all yours, pal. Now go the hell away. Alright, I'm about to film the episode on Italian chairs. Due to the British person incident from a couple weeks ago, we're no longer broadcasting in the UK, but I told the guy that it's airing right now as a funny prank. I wish I could see the look on his face when he finds out it's not available in his country. America wins again! <laughs>